Welcome, and thank you for your interest in AACE certification. This tutorial will help you to learn how to apply for AACE certification through our new website and our new AMS. So let's get started. After you've looked through our website and figured out exactly what type of certification you would like to apply for, you can click on any of the links on our website that say apply now or simply go to that page, learn more about it, and click apply now there. Whichever way that you decide to do it, you will click on it and you'll log into your AACE profile. Enter in your username and your password and click log in. You are taken to a main menu with many options to choose. What you want to do is look for certification application and select it. In the new AMS, there are new terminology that you should be familiar with, such as subcollection. We have eight certifications and each one will be listed on this page. You'll notice where it says the collection is certification application. The subcollection will actually tell you what certification it is that you're applying for. You will also notice a message that says you do not have any submissions. That means you've never applied for that particular certification and you'll see that throughout all of them. If you wish to apply for a particular certification you would navigate to the certification that you want and you would click create a new collection. For this tutorial, we're going to use the quickest application just to give you the gist of how you would go through this process and what you need to do. So let's select Subcollection for CCT and select Create New Collection. Once you select that particular certification, you are put into what's called a pending state meaning that you are now able to learn about what is required for the certification and what you must provide. On the instructions page, you can scroll down to find out what the eligibility requirements are, how you're going to complete the application, what to prepare for, experience, education, and also the application submission and payment. There is also a, a uh, a point of application review. And then this information is to tell you what you can expect next. We also have some links to some complimentary downloads for your convenience. And as the instructions say, click next when you're ready to continue. You can click the next button. You also can navigate from the navigation on the left hand side. So let's select industry related experience. Each page will give you further instructions of what you can and cannot do. There also are links if you should happen to have to use an outside uh, piece of documentation to upload. So the very first thing that you want to do after reading the instructions is you want to add your industry related experience by clicking the add button. Then you're going to select the experience and then it's going to ask you for a series of information. You're going to put the first date of your current employment that you wish to add. If you are currently employed, you will need to put today's date of the application so that it can calculate properly so that you're getting full credit for your work experience. So notice today is the 22nd of November and I've entered 11-22-2016. So there should be about 16 years or so um, years of experience once this is done that the system will actually calculate for you. So you want to list your employer name, that is a required field, and you also need to upload that documentation. Now I'm just going to add a very generic um, piece of information um, that you, you will actually upload this. And then you click Save. Notice when you click Save, it is giving you 16.9 requested points. That's really 16.9 years of experience that you are submitting um, 
for this particular certification. Notice that when we go back to the instructions that this particular certification only requires four years of industry related experience or a four year degree. But just for the purposes of learning how this works, we're going to go with the 16.9 years. Notice that you'll see the approved points are zero. That's because you are still in a pending state. That means you're submitting this, but we have not yet received it and approved it. We'll need to actually review what you've submitted. If you get, if you have more than one thing to enter after you clicked add and save, you actually can click this little pencil button here that says edit. And when you do that, it actually will give you the ability to see your date ranges that you put in, the employer that you, that you are attributing that to, and um, the file that you attach to it. Let's move to industry related education. The same as the other pages, you will have instructions up here to show you what you have to do and what isn't acceptable. So if you have education to add, you're going to click the add button. You're going to select at this point what type of education. Is it a two year degree, three, four, or postgraduate degree? Let's just put, pick a four year degree. You're going to put in your graduation date. So let's just say that it was 4-1-2010. The type of degree that you got, so we'll just put a BA and let's put our university in there. And you will have to, as it states here, a copy of your diploma or transcript is required. So you will click browse and you will upload your documentation uh, for this particular degree. And then you click save. Again, notice you get four points, which is for a four year degree after you click save. And once again, the points are zero because we have not yet received it. And therefore we haven't approved it. If you're still are unsure, did I, did I upload the right thing? You actually can click the pencil and it will allow you to edit it until you actually submit it. Let's click save again. The next order of business is canons of ethics. Every AACE certification candidate must adhere to the AACE's canons of ethics. You actually can click here to view the canons of ethics to actually read them if you're not familiar with them or maybe you've forgotten. And then you basically just have to click yes. And that means that you absolutely agree to uh, what you've read here on the canons of ethics because you will be required to uh, adhere to those um, prior to and once you become certified. Um, and then, well, let's, I want to show you something. So if you didn't click that um, and you just went to your profile, you can actually update your profile so that when you are able to submit your payment, you can be sure that your address is in there and you won't have any delays in uh, trying to process your payment. But notice it doesn't even give me the option to pay because if I go to status and review, and this will list all of our policies for non-discrimination, special accommodations, and the terms and conditions of applying for certification. But notice that we have two check marks here, but we have an X for canons of ethics, and the message is saying that you must complete that. So it's important to make sure that you are doing everything that you need to do through the process so, so that you can avoid uh, getting a red X, which will not allow you to progress until you provide that information. But in the event you've overlooked something and you get it, you simply can just go back to that page and say, oh yes, I forgot to select that and save it. And it moves you right down through and now notice submit checkout is there. So we know that our status and review is good because we have all three green arrows. So now we can do submit checkout. And this is where it's going to ask you for payment. Notice that uh, for this, I'm a non-member, so I'm going to get non-member pricing for $375. I will enter in my credit card information. And of course, this is just a test, so this isn't a real card. You won't be able to use this. Um, but you'll just enter all of your information here. Your address 
should already be pulled over from your profile. That's why it's important when you saw it in the left hand side of the navigation uh, on the previous page that, that you have that information there. And then you'll click next. And we'll wait for the receipt. And as you can see, it is showing that I did pay the $375. Here's all my information here. And I also can see um, the information that I've already submitted. Notice that my submittal status now has actually taken all of the information that I filled out and put it in an exam clearance status. That means it's now been submitted to headquarters staff for them to review. There is nothing more that you need to do at this point because the headquarters staff will review your information and if they have any questions or if there's any particular item that you've submitted that is not accepted, they will give you the opportunity to correct it and will ask for more information. You may want to check out the tutorial for need more information uh, so that you can learn how that process works, which is very similar to what was just provided in this example.